So are you looking into particle analysis and you're wondering if the Rotap RX29 is right for you? Don't worry, I'll tell you everything you need to know, so stick around. Hey there, what's up? My name's Andrew Kotlar and odds are you've heard of the WS Tyler Rotap RX29 before. It's a device that uses dual rotating and tapping motions to facilitate particle movement in a test sieve stack. That's literally where the name Rotap came from. Having seen the Rotap RX29 thrive for decades, WS Tyler has helped hundreds of customers across dozens of industries implement their particle size analysis process to the best standards out there. So in this video, we'll go over what a Rotap RX29 is, how much it costs, the specs of the RX29, how uh, it works, and the pros and cons surrounding the RX29. The WS Tyler Rotap RX29 is WS Tyler's signature mechanical sieve shaker that performs dual oscillating and brute force hammer tapping motions to separate the individual particles in a test sieve stack. Basically, it's a device that's designed to agitate the particles on your test sieve to draw a dependable particle size distribution curve. So currently, the RX29 costs $2,900. This price is a reflection of the price of the raw material, though, to construct the device and doesn't really include any test sieves. Available of 115 to 230 volt variants, the Rotap can accommodate operations that require 50 cycles and 60 cycles. But in terms of test sieve compatibility, the RX29 is meant to test 8 inch test sieves. This makes it capable of testing particles ranging from 2 inches to 20 microns. When it comes to your test sieve stack, if you use half height sieves, uh, a test sieve stack can hold up to 13 sieves with a half height uh, catch pan. If full height test sieves are used, a test sieve stack can hold up to 6 sieves with a full height catch pan. The Rotap RX29 uses a motorized system to drive the oscillating motion and brute force hammer taps that the RX29 is famous for. This moves the particles on each sieve in a flat plane while forcing them through the mesh openings of the test sieves. When it comes to operating the device, the RX29 is very user friendly. Lab operators just need to place their test sieve stack, adjust the height of the sieve stack, set the test duration, and then press the start button. But I will say it's recommended to conduct an end of sieving analysis before using the device for the first time. The most significant selling point associated with the RX29 is its reputation. Since its creation, it's become regarded as the gold standard sieve shaker through the particle size analysis industry. In fact, it can be traced back to dozens of industry standards. Another key benefit is its ease of use. Like I said before, the, the device is, for the most part, plug and play. This reduces the changes of user error, making it easier for labs with multiple operators to have consistent results. The biggest drawback for the RX29 is the amount of noise it makes. It can produce 85 decibels on top of any rattling particles in your test sieve stack. This can be managed down to a noise level of 78 decibels when the device is placed in a specially made sound enclosure. But it should also be noted that the device is constructed using casted metal. This makes the device very heavy, requiring at least two people to install or transport it safely. And despite the weight, the motions it performs to promote particle movement are pretty aggressive. Because of that, the device is known to move and shift when testing material, which means it should be bolted down. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, fill out a contact us form so we can answer your specific questions. Just click the link in the description. And if you'd like to learn more about Woven Wire Mesh or our many products, we have a learning center filled with written and video content to make you an expert. Just click that second link and you'll be that expert in no time. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring that bell to keep up with all things WS Tyler. Once again, my name is Andrew Kotlar and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye for now.